Hi guys and welcome back to the channel on this rather cold and gloomy December afternoon. So this video I'm shooting a little bit earlier than I planned. Um, this is the first part of a three part series on what is going to be the biggest ever upgrade um, I've ever done to this car and probably the biggest upgrade I've done to any of the cars I've owned um, to be honest. So what am I having done? Well, I'm basically having a engine rebuild uh, with the aim of making a more powerful car. Um, why am I doing this? You may say, you know, the car's got plenty of power as it as it ha as it is, Mark. Um, and you're probably right. Uh, car car's currently running 650-ish to 670-ish horsepower on a, a stage two tune using stock components. Uh, with aftermarket air filters and uh, sports cats and exhaust. Um, but I just really wanted this car to reach its full potential. Um, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I wanted to make the car bulletproof. Uh, there's nothing on the horizon really that's with anywhere near my, um, within my reach, financially speaking, uh, that would be superior to this car in my mind. And therefore, yeah, I, I really just want to kind of like push it to the limit. So, um, I know there are lots of people that have a uh, stock engine, slap some bigger turbos on it and, and tune them and, and sort of like seem to be happy with that. Um, with this particular engine, um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not confident in that. Um, you just have to watch Tavares' video on his 675LT. Uh, I'm watching that go pop uh, to, to find out the potential outcome of that strategy. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about McLaren engines because I've learned a lot from some very knowledgeable people. Uh, I don't think these things are widely known within the McLaren community. And I'm just going to try and show you the whole process in a level of detail from start to finish that's never done, been done before. So if any of you are thinking of having an engine build or some major work done on your car, you're fully aware of uh, all the ins and outs, all the positives and negatives. So this car has the M838T, which is the 3.8 liter V8 engine, uh, originally a Nissan design, designed for, um, I believe it was, um, well, it was a race engine, originally, originally de uh, developed for NASCAR, and it was developed uh, as a naturally aspirated engine. And its original form, it was a very high quality billet unit. Um, uh, but McLaren bought that design within my, with the mind of putting it into their new series of road cars. However, in order to get the engine uh, ready on time and achieve the power that they wanted, they decided to put turbochargers on it and hence the M838T was born. Um, the original engines in the first generation of cars, i.e. the 12C and the 650S, uh, were, I believe, uh, more robust uh, because they had heavier weight components. Uh, but the downside of that is the engine response was a little bit more sluggish, which you will hear people talk about, especially if you um, watch some of Harry Metcalf's most recent videos with the 650S that he's bought. Um, in order to remedy that, uh, McLaren uh, fitted more lightweight components. Um, this came to fruition in the 675LT. Um, the downside of that was as those co components became less durable, in particular the rods. Um, they took away a lot of metal, uh, the items were still cast and therefore lost a lot of strength. So therefore, in most people's opinions that are in the know, the 675LT is at the limit of that engine, power-wise. And this basically has more or less the same engine as the 675LT. Um, therefore, this being currently tuned as it is to 650 to 670 horsepower, um, with a stage two tune from Litchfield and uh, enhanced uh, intake filters, sports caps and exhaust, again is kind of at its limit so I wouldn't although I know lots of people do push them past that um, I wouldn't feel confident in it so I'm gonna do it the expensive way but what I consider the proper way which is by having the engine rebuilt um, what we're gonna do is uh, replace the rods pistons and liners 
which are another potential failure point um, in the car and make it much more bulletproof. In effect, I've been told that the particular build I'm having um, should quite comfortably handle up to a thousand horsepower. Uh, we're not going quite that crazy. We're going to go around 800 horsepower is what I'm aiming for. Um, but it's still a lot of power and quite exciting. Uh, I just wanted it bulletproof so I can be more confident in, uh, in it running that, 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 level, that, level of, that level of power. Now initially I thought I would have to split the work into two parts, i.e. the engine build first and then the turbocharger upgrade. Um, but some things have changed, which means I'm looking at doing everything in one go, which is the most cost-effective way of doing it long term, because uh, you're uh, taking the car apart a lot less. Um, so in conjunction with the engine build, uh, I'm going to go down the hybrid turbo route, so using some stock uh, Mitsubishi McLaren turbos. Um, they will be sent away to TTE, uh, a turbo specialist in Germany. Uh, the reason why we've gone with TTE, again, is pure from insider uh, advice and knowledge. Um, my engine builder has recommended this particular brand simply because he sees it as the most durable. Um, I know a lot of people like pure turbos on these builds, um, but he's seen some failures. Um, now, I know T uh, pure turbos are well respected, so I can't speak to that, but I'm going to go with his advice. Um, handily, because of the uh, amount of parts he has access to, uh, he has uh, stock turbos sitting on the shelf that he's going to send away to get hybrid modified, uh, bigger impellers, etc. Um, and then take my turbos as exchange. So again, that cuts down the cost quite radically, which is really great. Um, and then the car will be remapped. So who is doing the work and why am I having those people do the work? So for those of you who watch the channel, you probably know that I'm a big fanboy of V Engineering. Um, Steve that works at V, um, at a senior level in the technical department of McLaren for many years, flown all, all over the world to deal with technical issues, um, literally knows every nut and bolt in the cars and I trust him implicitly. Um, so he's going to be doing the engine removal and then Steve essentially put me in touch with a chap called Dave. Dave runs a company called Race Engine Build and Dave is from the McLaren fold as well. So he was senior engine builder for their GT teams um, for I think almost double digit years and in a similar way Steve knows every nut and bolt of those engines. The other advantage that Dave has is that uh, in conjunction with being a super nice guy, um, having gone to visit him, um, he has unprecedented access to parts. And although there are other very capable aftermarket McLaren specialists out there, one of the things they tend to struggle with is getting hold of the parts, whereas Dave does not. He literally has uh, uh, a number of uh, at least sort of five to ten sort of engine blocks that uh, sitting in his workshop in various states of repair um, that he can use um, when he's doing his work. Um, so yeah, Dave will be collecting the engine uh, from V Engineering when it's been removed by Steve. Um, he will be doing the engine work. While we've got the engine out, we're gonna look at a number of other things. Some things I may or may not do, uh, potentially, uh, thinking that we might do an LSD, a mechanical LSD while we're in there. Uh, depends on what other work needs doing, which I'll talk to talk about in a bit. Also, as uh, you probably know, if you know these cars well and you've seen them on the ramp and had the under trays off, they all sweat a bit, they all lose a little bit of oil. Um, so there is a remedy to that, it's a catch can. Uh, they installed this catch can on the center. Uh, the catch can itself is about 500 pounds, um, which isn't a huge amount of money in comparison to the cost of the overall work. So uh, potentially having one of those fitted as it doesn't cost any additional labor at the time when the engine's out uh, to resolve that issue. In conjunction with that, there's a bit of a knocking noise that annoys me a little bit. Um, it's uh, apparently a coolant pump that rattles against the, uh, the carbon fiber tub. 
So obviously gonna sort that out because it's a fairly simple fix. Just stick some foam or padding in there. Um, when the engine comes apart, uh, I've been warned potential areas are where are the rocker covers. Uh, this has been highlighted in other videos by other people. So I am prepared for that. They cost 240 pounds each and there are eight of them, but we can replace them individually. So if there's one or two that are bad, and the rest are okay, we'll obviously replace the ones that need replacing, but leave alone the ones that are okay. Other than that, they're all the main things, I suppose, that we're thinking about and are concerned about. When the engine is returned to Steve, it'll uh, be obviously reinstalled in the car um, with its all its Gucci internals, and then um, it will go for mapping. Uh, with regards to mapping, um, again, I'm going on a Dave recommendation. So uh, Dave, again, knows someone uh, within McLaren. Uh, I haven't met him yet, but essentially he was one of the mapping technicians. Um, I don't know exactly what the precise title of someone that does that job is, um, but one of the mapping technicians that worked for McLaren for several years, again, has great familiar familiarity with the, length, with the engines, and uh, he'll be uh, remapping the car to uh, get the potential out of the setup that we have installed. So in the next part of this video, uh, you're gonna probably see the car in bits and the engine in bits. Um, so it's really quite exciting, but also scary at the same time. Um, but I, uh, I'm quite excited that I get to share this all with, I get to share all of this with you guys uh, and I get to give you all a, a really good insight into the whole engine rebuild stroke upgrade process from start to finish that I don't think really anyone has done in quite this level of detail yet. So I'll see you in the next part guys where I'll probably be at the engineering. See you soon.